How's it going everybody? It's Aparicio and today what I'm going to be showing you is how to get cinematic contrast in DaVinci Resolve. A lot of this can be personal taste. So a lot of things today are obviously shot on digital so a lot of times they obviously like to grade and keep the highest dynamic range possible. They want to keep high dynamic range and they want to keep details in the shadows and in the highlights. That's pretty much what we're going to be going over today. And also, sorry about my voice, I am a little under the weather. So anyway, so this is uh, the shot I have and I have a grade that I already did. And I did two CSTs. Um, this is for an Ari Alexa Mini. And I started with primaries. All right, so I just used my lift gem and gain. And I just kind of opened up the image to work with. And then we have the white balance and I brought it back to something a little more of a normal feel because it was a little green. And then next is where I have my contrast and saturation. I have it in a parallel kind of node structure and I just did it so I could separate them. I usually have a node where it's like contrast slash saturation, but I just wanted to separate it here to make it easier. So we, we have contrast and we have saturation and they're blended together so it's that's why i did it let's see what we did with the contrast okay so i'm, I'm obviously going to pan in here it's super subtle but it just makes it the roll off feel a lot better on the whole entire picture and then i i adjusted the saturation it was looking a little dull so so i reset both of these and let's just go through it again you know, obviously you see how you have uh these two points here down by the shadows, and there's another point up by the highlights, right? And then make sure you have your uh, your scopes open. I have my waveform open, and I'm just seeing if I'm clipping anything. So we want to keep high dynamic range. We don't want to clip any highlights, obviously. These highlights are looking pretty good. Uh, you see the top here, the highest highs. We're going to bring it down to about the highest is at 8, 9, 6. That's where I like to put it anyway. And then come down here. And you're just gonna, you don't have to bring the shadow one as, uh, up as much. You just bring it up, maybe to around almost midway between 128 and zero. And then you're gonna come right here, click this, editable splines, click it. And now when we go to click our points again, there will be a another point that pops up right here. And this is kind of where the magic comes in with the contrast. So you can see our image is looking pretty stale uh, after what we just did. So what you can do is go here and it's still restricting the highest highs, the highest highlights from uh, going any further than this point. But we are raising everything else right up to that point so we can get a natural look with the highlights. We don't want it to be too grayed out. And then we're going to come down here to our shadows and then this is where it starts to kind of come all together. And then we bring that down as well. And you can go pretty low with this because we're not clipping anything. I'm going to pull this in. Obviously, the longer these points are, uh, the more into the midtones you're going to be grabbing. That can make everything look a little too dull, so you want to keep it kind of short. Okay, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to bring this one a little closer, and I'll go right there. This should be subtle, all right? You don't want this to be super dramatic. The magic is in the subtlety. So... Let's see what we did. We just made everything a lot smoother and just more of that cinematic feel that I see a lot today in movies and TV. And I can even bring these up a little bit if it's looking a little too dull. And then with the rest of the grade, I just added a look and some gradient, as you can see. Now let's just turn off our contrast, or you could also name this curves. And you could see kind of what we did. And then what I did from here is I added a, a power window around her just to make her stand out a little bit more. I just added uh, a little more contrast to her face just to give her more of a pop in the image. And then when you go and adjust, obviously when you go and adjust the contrast and you mess with these curves, you're going to be affecting the saturation a little bit. So you go and adjust your saturation. Uh, you go for a dull bleak look or you go up and intensify it but this look actually works well dull thank you guys for watching i hope you found this helpful this is kind of a small step in your color grading process that you can build upon to, to tweak it to make it look even better 
But I think if you're going for that high dynamic range look and that kind of modern cinematic look, this is a good technique uh, to use. So with that being said, I will see you in the next one.